Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for inviting me to this splendid conference. Gatehouse of Fleet lies in the very southwest of Scotland. The Gatehouse developed an initiative from this community to prove the charity status composed of local volunteers has, among many projects, researched both the history of the town and the adjoining designed landscape of Canning, with a view to assisting the local economy by restoring to visitors and locals alike something of the ideal landscape which was planned here in the second half of the 18th century. This is the story of how the development initiative has put its ideas into action in the implementation of a design landscape management plan which it commissioned in 2007. I was fascinated by the last talk because my research was on the fighting in the industry, so it's quite similar to the, the Dighty Burn or the Duradain and places like that. Paintings and photographs help to put contemporary gatehouse in its historic context. R.G. Kelly's 1852 view over gatehouse fleet belonging to the Stuartry Museum gives an idea of the town and the adjoining estate. Gatehouse is best known as an arrested industrial settlement, and we can still see in the picture in the center the fires in the local cotton mill in the last days of its production. In the detail from the Calais picture, we see Calais House sitting in its designed landscape with its artificial lake, its carefully sighted shelves of trees, and the intervening parkland. It was James Murray of Broughton, here painted by Sir Joshua Reynolds, which you can see at the checkers if you're invited, <laughs> um, who is most associated with the creation of the design landscape. It was in 1763 that Murray completed the new mansion of Calais and began to lay out the surrounding parkland, which is associated with the designer James Ramsey. Murray also created the planned settlement of Gatehouse to house the tradesmen needed to maintain Calais and to boost his income through feuds. But that's a, a separate story. A series of watercolours by Henry Joseph Mole, a Dorset man who was factor at Cali in the 1860s and 70s. Incidentally, the man who taught his friend Thomas Hardy to use watercolours, hint of life at Cali. These watercolours can be seen in the Dorset County Museum of Dorchester, of which he was the first curator. And here, for instance, we see corn being sown in the spring, with the, the gatehouse hills in the background. And there is another one of harvesting into water. The watercolours of Henry Mole also reveal lost features of the design landscape and suggest how they could be recreated. Thus we see a wooden walkway running under, under what is known as Bush Bridge with a man with a gun, perhaps the Laird of Calais himself. A postcard shows the walkway emerging from under the bridge. And a photograph shows the continuation of the walkway for viewers to watch the waterfalls. Here with George McMurray doing that. Incidentally, this waterway had been completely realigned to maximize the flow of water to the cotton mills. In 1933, Cali House and the surrounding parkland were sold to the Forestry Commission and the condition of the sale was that the woodland was to be felled. A.R. Sturrocks, felling timber at Cali, also now in the Stuart Museum, shows this process getting underway. The scene may have reminded Sturrock 
of the battlefields of France, where he was badly wounded. Scarrett, incidentally, was one of Dorothy L. Sayers' artist friends, on whom the murder mystery of five red herrings is based. Another important feature of the design landscape is the temple built for James Murray in 1779. A postcard view from the early 1900s shows the open parkland surrounding the temple at that time, so that it would be visible from Cali House as an important feature in the design landscape. However, following the sale of the Cali policies to the Forestry Commission, much of the design landscape was planted, and today the temple is surrounded by trees, and indeed, you can see from this our camp's folk image, trees now threatening the structure. I think the photographs a good example of how an image intended for one purpose can help with another. Over the last few years, the Gatehouse Development Initiative has worked very closely with the Forestry Commission and other stakeholders to enhance aspects of the design landscape. Echoing Neil Ashton's thoughts this morning, uh, it's our very strong belief that the Forestry Commission's land is our land, not their land, not the bureaucracy's land. So we are very keen to make the most of the forestry as a community resource. This spring, for instance, following a geophysic survey by the Commission, the Cali Mott site was carefully cleared of trees by contractors, revealing again the extent of this site. And it was agreed with the Commission that the Gatehouse volunteers would clear up all the trash around the site. Quite a big task. And the effort by the volunteers counted towards a small action earth grant to renew the information panel at the site. So here are the volunteers with the contractor ready to chip the piles of trash. They did leave some but environmental piles as well. In late 2009, the Gatehouse Development Initiative secured £66,000 from the Heritage Lottery Fund and Leader to restore parts of the neglected walls within the design landscape. Obviously, publicising projects is an important uh, aspect for the fund, and also for ourselves to encourage people to get involved in the project. So it was that in 2010, on the basis of the management plan, and having carried out a detailed survey of, I think, about 15 kilometres of walls under the direction of the conservation body Sorby Heritage, and most importantly, having raised the necessary funds, we began work to restore elements of the design landscape. The key, in my view, to success with such projects has been building up the enthusiasm amongst the many volunteers and really the amount of work that they were able to do to clear the walls of vegetation. As well as working with local volunteers, we had a group uh, of uh, drug uh, rehabilitation uh, people, and also a group of 16 to 25 year olds uh, who were working on the Forestry Commission project because they were people without a uh, job or in education. And quite often, to begin in these projects, they kind of sat around and played with their mobiles, weren't interested. They found that when they could clear a section of wall, when they could learn how to build a big bonfire. They could torch a car, but they didn't know how to build a bonfire. <laughs> it's like the graffiti in the previous talk. It kind of enthusiasm them in that sort of way. Another key component, I think, was to build up a relationship with various rangers 
forestry range or local authorities have. And they could help to organize volunteer days and bring the necessary tools. So if it's a hard hat day, they would bring the hard tap hats, the hives, whatever. In this image, we can see you can just get an idea of how much work there was to do. And here the volunteers are clearing the jungle from the ha-ha at Cali House. The gentleman you can see with the, with the stall there is in fact a brain surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> As they say, you don't need one, but it certainly helped. <laughs> The main boundary wall on the road leading into Gatehouse was in a similar state, all overgrown with ivy. And here we can see after the ivy was cleared, and there just some of the trees remained, you see various holes in the wall. And the reason for doing building up this wall was that Gatehouse is so dependent on tourism that the whole look of the place is really important. And we brought in professional dikers, that was what the money went on, to restore parts of the boundary wall, helping to maintain this important craft, and providing them with much needed employment in a period of economic downturn. And all the volunteers on the project, over a hundred people, and a group of local school children, had the chance to take part in diking training days. They worked on a real piece of wall, they had to take down a bit of wall and build it up again, so it was, it was no messy. From the, the records in the Kikuri Sheriff Court papers, now in the records of Scotland, we know not only how much each night had built, but also how much the work cost. And the total cost of this, just this one section, as we can see, was 324 pounds, 15 and 6 months in 1823. And I think that gives us some idea of just how much the Marys were spending on estate improvement and showing off their position in society. From the records, we even know who built the original sections of wall. And we've recorded this in three plaques along the wall. I have been in touch with John McGill's great-great-grandson, and I know that he's been able to see the very section of wall that his forebear built. There were other unique features, such as a sunken dike. This is where a ditch is dug out, and a wall is built in the middle of it. It's not like a half heart, which is on one side so that you'd hardly know that the wall was there, keeping animals out, but not interrupting the view of the design plans. In this photograph of the restored Sankada, we get an idea today of the planned landscape, which the Murrays could only have imagined at the end of the 18th century. Incidentally, we know from the accounts that the dike was covered in turf, not stone. And I'm pleased to say that it was a group of Glasgow lawyers who came down to Cali to help us dig the turf and put it on the wall. And we were pleased to receive the Scottish Civic Trust Award for our work on the wall. So that's a great fillip to all the volunteers. And the way the project has enhanced Forestry Commission's estate has also led them to single out Gatehouse and as, as an example of good practice work with communities. As with the boundary walls, we took on the old estate <coughs> dating from the 1820s. This had been abandoned by the Forestry Commission and was at that time threatened with demolition. Fortunately, we prepared a plan for its conservation. And when the so-called Sulwa project was looking for projects, as a number of projects do near the time of their conclusion, to use up remaining funds, we were able to slot in the old school into the program. 
And here again, the volunteers cleared the old buildings, hard hat day. And this image shows that the clear building before professional masons were employed to secure the structure. We also researched and um, put up an information panel at the site. So that's another feature of the design landscape that was conserved. Our latest project is the conservation of the temple, a project which we envisage next one, temple, yeah. uh, which uh, we envisage will cost about 70,000 pounds. Again, volunteers have researched the history of this structure. In the 1780s, we know that William Todd, who looked after James Murray's drove cattle, lived here, according to the surviving diary of his son, William. The volunteers have also surveyed the site. And this image, which is one which I put in, uh, they are listening to the recent gallery archaeologist James Jane Brand on how they should proceed. I think that so that they shouldn't uh, proceed in total anarchy, <laughs> as Neil would have uh, recommended that. Uh, from the survey of the site, pottery and glass from the 18th century were found, confirming the evidence from William Todd's diary, showing that the building had been lived in. And so, again, the local authorities, Andrew Nicholson, very kindly uh, catalogued all the finds for us. Among the county records, uh, there's an invoice for the, for the building of the temple, and you maybe just make out the bottom the signature of Irishman Hugh O'Neill, Murray's overseer of Cali. Murray's had strong connections with Donegal, but it also had an estate. And we also found an Irish eighth of 1775, drawing our attention again to the strong connection between Cali and Kilbane. But you can just see the heart in the column. But there's a, a Googled version. Uh, here's an example from a good coin of seven, uh, Irish, eight of 1775, should look like. Again, you can see the heart on one side. So now, our task is to raise a lot more money than an Irish eight of the carry has the necessary work in conservation. With this building. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. A brief overview of what one small community group of volunteers has been doing in order to conserve aspects of this important design landscape. Thank you.